Hey, hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Nerdly Out Loud, the official channel of nerdly.co.uk, your favourite British home for the news, reviews and exclusive interviews. We like to cover everything from the big budget to the low budget to the no budget, but this one's different. You'll notice the change of scenery, I'm just doing a quick little intro, this is a very, very quick little intro, we are getting into some press um, interview that we recently just did for Impact Wrestling. Now, something I've not really had a chance to do a lot of on this channel is to talk about wrestling, but I do love me some wrestling. So when I got asked to jump on a press pass with the guys at Impact to talk to Mickey James, Gail Kim and Diana Parazzo in the run up to Bound for Glory, you are damn right I'm going to do that. Before we do get into the interview, please do hit that like, hit that subscribe and ding that bell. Um, so the way this one's going to work is a little bit different. It wasn't just me there, there was, a, there was a ton of media doing this chat on Zoom. It was such a cool experience, I really enjoyed it. I got to ask one question, so you will see me um, come on video and ask my question, which I just totally loved. Just totally loved hearing uh, Gail Kim say my name was epic. Um, so what I've done is I've taken all the other people's uh, questions as well and um, cut their video from the interview because obviously I don't have all their permissions and I've put up place cards for the question that they asked. There were some great questions so I really didn't want to drop too many of them. I wanted you all to hear the answers that these guys were given. It was it was an awesome experience. There was like a whole hour of just sitting and shooting the breeze with some of the best female wrestlers of my generation and of the current generation. It's just Gail Kim, what a legend. Mickey James, what a legend. And then Diana Parazzo, a future Hall of Famer. Definitely, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Impact are doing amazing things right now. Like I say, I don't get to talk about it enough, but I do love me some wrestling. I watch a lot of it with my 10-year-old daughter. She loves it. We love to talk about wrestling. I'm, I'm possibly going to be bringing some stuff onto the channel at some point. I don't know. Um, I'm thinking about it. I'm planning things. But in the meantime, this is the the press pass interview, um, media interview. It was awesome to do. Um, Phil passed it over to me because he's not a big one for sitting in on interviews and whatnot. So uh, happy days, happy days. There are a few more incoming I'm waiting to hear more about. So that should be awesome. And if you love your Impact Wrestling, if you love any kind of wrestling, stick around. It's going to be more. Again, for you to find out about those things, hit that notification bell, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I am just going to roll into the interview slash podcast hosted by Gail Kim. And yeah. That's pretty much all I have to say. I just wanted to do a cheeky little intro, and we're about to get into it, so um, enjoy. Okay, all right. First, I'm going to announce the challenger at Bound for Glory. She is a nine-time women's champion, the NWA Empower executive producer, and women's wrestling legend, my friend, Mickey James. Welcome, Mickey. Hey, yo. Hi, babe. Oh, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm super excited for Bound for Glory. I'm Me so too. excited for your, your challenger, who is the champion. And I'm going to introduce her right now. The two-time and current Impact Wrestling Women's Knockouts Champion. And also the AAA Reina Duranas women's champion right now. She is the virtuosa Diana Perazzo. Hey, Diana. Hi, Gail. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. Thanks. Uh, thanks for joining us today because I know you guys aren't exactly getting along right now. Um, well, I'm glad you're great. here. Uh, although it did get a little ugly last week. I saw um, Diana. She showed up to my house. Diana, you showed up to my house. I know what I did. Um, it seems like everyone's spitting the narrative a little bit. I think we forget what happened at Slammiversary when Mickey came to my house, to my Impact Wrestling, our Impact Wrestling Gale, and attacked me. So as far as I'm concerned, we, we've spun this narrative so far to somehow make me the bad guy. But I'm the, I'm the victim in all of this. You're the victim. 
I know I, if I re remember correctly, I came to empower to invite you to be a part of something that I thought was pretty special. And I, I respected you as a champion. And I think that you are a star and I was grateful for the opportunity to have you and impact represented at empower. I'm sorry that your ego has allowed you to spin this in another way. But if I look at it, I think it's twice now that you have had to attack me behind my back and catch me off guard in a place where you knew that uh you know i wouldn't expect it and that's how you've gotten the advantage twice now so you know uh, Mickey, you i for this. one i think it's uh incredible and it, it shows that you know what amazing things that all the women can do across the world and i think that the um knockouts division and impact have always been ahead of the curve with the women i feel like they've always done really cool stuff and so to bring back the knockouts knockdown and to be a part of that from you know on the commentary team with beta and to watch all of these matches um live and in person and unfold it was just amazing and you know coming off in power and then to be asked to be a part of this it was really special to me so uh you know and then there was a special match that i had a uh, you know obviously a a real interest in which was diana's pick your poison match so well i will say coming off the uh tale of nwa empower and for me to be be able to be a part of that as well was truly i i told mickey after that event happened i said Thank you so much because not only, you know, us women, we always feel like we're fighting. <laughs> no matter where I'm retired and I still feel like I'm fighting for women's wrestling at this point, even though things have gotten much better. And I have to say, you know, it it gave us such um to know that we did it together. And it, it was so not only was the show fulfilling for entertainment wise for the fans, but it was emotionally fulfilling for us as women in this business to know that all these years of hard work has um, paid off in some way. And for us to be able to bring knockouts, knockdown, uh, it hasn't been back since 2017, um, to bring it back right off of that and taking that momentum, it's been great. And using a lot of the same girls, you know, uh, the really top of the industry right now, it's, it's just a really exciting time for women right now. I think 2021 for women's wrestling has been a huge success. Um, to have both of these events so close to each other really uh, pushes forward the narrative that that women's wrestling is important and should be cared about and is a draw. Um, and we can do everything that uh, that we want to really. Um, but Knockouts Knockdown especially is really special to me because that was my like eighth professional wrestling match with impact. So um, it was a really full circle feeling when we were told there was going to be a knockouts knockdown and now I got to be a part of it on the flip side. Um, so I'm really excited to see what the reaction is going to be on Saturday when everyone sees this event. I think um, we brought in some really, some really great girls who were looking for an opportunity. And again, I know what that feeling is like. So uh, I really think that people are gonna, gonna pay attention to these ladies. Um, and then, you know, I'm obviously the virtuosa. So uh, I am the head of the pack at, at Impact. And um, I really am excited for my match. Uh, it doesn't matter who Mickey picked for me in this pick your poison thing, because I've dominated them all. Uh, most of our knockouts roster, most of the outside uh, ladies that have come in. So I have no problem with whoever you picked, Mickey. intergender i i believe it's an intergender the a digital media championship um that's what it's indicating right now and the direction we're going to go through uh towards i'm all for it i mean we've seen other titles in other companies basically that are kind of open the 24 7 title i guess you can call i mean it's pretty much open to any gender right right that title was mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i'm okay with it i i like it i think it's something different i think it's something exciting that yeah, I mean, what's to say that Deanna or Mickey, if whoever's the knockouts champion, can't go for the digital media championship after that. So I think it's just more excitement, more things to look out for for Impact Wrestling. And um, ladies, are you interested looking out, have your eyes on that title or what? Um, yeah, I have my eyes eyes on all the titles. So there's no doubt uh, if there's an opportunity to become the digital media champion, why wouldn't I? want to carry that championship. Um, you know, as far as intergender wrestling goes, I think 
impact has has done it and there's a purpose to it um and when it makes sense it makes sense so uh i think it's really cool we're in a company that allows us to to break those barriers down and, and push forward again how important women are uh in terms of wrestling and that we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with men so um yeah i would love to add a third championship to to my all my gold that's so exciting no it really is exciting and i think for to show different types of matchups and opportunities for people who wouldn't necessarily have a chance to wrestle for but what i'm most excited for i'm really excited for you diana because after you lose the knockouts championship you can have something to fill that little void so you're welcome you know <laughs>
uh, there were surprises that I didn't even expect and I'm there working. Um, but I think a lot of people were surprised fans and it's always just so refreshing to have those nice surprises in wrestling because uh, I think people are just too spoiled now by spoilers, right? So yeah. um, it's nice. Okay. I did not know how, well, I obviously I didn't see that coming. So I didn't know how that was going to work out. I mean, uh, she's lucky that my son wasn't there because we would, we would be having a much different conversation right now for one. Um, I suppose eventually I would have called the authorities and had her arrested in her cute little white shoes and her little, she would have looked real cute in a jail cell like that. The match has been set. So I've been there. I've had fights very similar to that. I love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love it. Let them go at it. And I can't wait for Las Vegas, Bound for Glory, Sam Sam. I can't wait to see who's going to come out on top. Sometimes you need to get a little dirty like that, you know, throughout this process. Huh. And then at the end, let's see who's going to come out victorious. Kevin from Nerdly. What do you like to be called, Kev or Kevin? Kev, Kevin, uh, anything's fine. Anything's fine. I don't mind. I don't mind. You've earned the right to call me whatever you want. Welcome. Welcome, Kev. So, so um, I am going to step back a little bit to Diana before, during one of your answers. You mentioned growing up as, as a young girl and all that and, and looking up to these wrestlers and the likes of Mickey James and Gail Kim. Watch a lot of wrestling with my 10-year-old daughter and right now, there is just such a multitude of fantastic talent out there, females-wise, across the board. Um, what would be a good bit of advice that you guys would give to someone her age or any girl their age wanting to maybe look to get into this sort of career? I would say first, make sure your education comes first, I think. Because even in wrestling, you need to have an, you know, an education and a knowledge of how business works. But also, I would say... Uh, and I'm sure Deanna and Gail can both attest to this is like, do your homework and find the right school, like, a, a you know, a school that has like a track record and is respected across the board, because a lot of real like there's obviously talent comes from different places, but there's a lot of really, especially now, I think there's more respected schools out there now than there ever was. Um, but there's also a lot of not so good schools. And I, I that was my biggest thing is when I first started the school I started at. Um, I ended up transferring like a year and a half later and I had to relearn a lot of stuff. I mean, I'm grateful for it because it was my foot in the door, but I had to relearn a lot of stuff over um, after that first year and a half or whatever. So I definitely walk before you run people. Uh, if you want to do that, because just like you said, I always say the same thing <clears throat> is get a backup education, a backup skill, whatever. I still, I have education, but I still wish I got more backup skills because mm -hmm. this business is not something that can last forever. I mean, I retired when I was 40. So, I mean, 40 still, I know maybe not to you guys, but it is still too young, right? It's very young. So, um, uh, you have a lot of time and I've been just very fortunate to be able to stay in the business, but that doesn't always happen. So definitely yeah. what you're saying um, that- Especially for women, it doesn't happen. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's, it's not, now it is- now you know more than it used to be but the average span of a female in the wrestling business was like seven years you know yeah. Yeah. when I got in and that's it's you know that would you would be actually making money or or being able to call it a career for say so I started wrestling when I was 18 fresh out of high school so I think my biggest advice besides what you guys have already said is to get an education because I wish I had done that and I'm doing it now when my life is crazy um, is to, to be a kid and maybe don't start until you're 18. Live your life because those are years that I missed with friends and going to college and um, a lot of stuff that are once in a lifetime, you're only going to get to do those things once. And I see a lot of, especially where I'm from in the Northeast, uh, young people starting when they're 16 and 15 and 17 and it, and it takes away from your childhood. So go be a kid and enjoy what 16, 17, 18, 21 has to offer um, and, and enjoy that part of your life before you get into this. Because once you're in wrestling, it's, it's you're either all in or you're all out if you want it to be your career. And um, there's a lot of things that I missed 
from that time period in my life that I wish I could have done differently. Well, th- thank you guys. Thank you. And it's, uh, it's amazing for me as a father because uh, she has so many amazing, talented women to look up to on, on the scene. So thank oh. you for that. Makes my job easier. Um, I think what my biggest focus is right now is not, uh, you know, anything, it's not anything but Bound for Glory. This is, you know, the biggest match, um, one might say that I've had thus far. Um, so my focuses are, are set on this, um, and it's been an incredible year. I'm, I'm grateful for all of the, the cool things I've been able to do and the, the history I've been able to make for myself. I'm mean, going to really, you know, carve out my name, um, as, the best technical women's wrestler in the world. Um, But this match is going to be a telltale sign that if I am what I am and I I, uh, can do what I say I'm going to do and that's defend my knockouts championship successfully, um, that is what's going to cement my legacy permanently. So uh, I have no other focus right now, but my match at Bound for Glory. Well, it's a real shame that that's what you're banking on to cement your legacy because I don't think that's going to work out for you, Deanna. Yeah, I've been able, I've been fortunate enough to do a lot in the in the business and, and I had taken a lot of my focus and put it in women's wrestling and, and representing that and be able to put on Empower. But to have the opportunity to come back and fight for the Knockouts Championship, something that I've held three times um, after not holding any championship anywhere in the last, uh, you know, it's been a while. It's been a while since I've held gold. Um, so it's a huge opportunity for me. And um, it's a huge opportunity for me against, you know, Deanna, who is, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, probably one of the best women out there right now, globally across the globe. And um, so it's going to test me on a lot of levels. And it's going, it's, it's mentally tested me. And I've been prepping for it, like mentally and physically, because I know that she's going to bring 10,000%. So I'm going to have to do the same, um, you know, love her or hate her. You got to respect that about her. And she is very, very technical and te- and like the technical side, like everyone knows that was never my thing. That was not my, so she might have I've been trying to get, you know, brush up and brush up. I should say, Gail, brush up <laughs> my technical. I'm like, you know, you, you are a master of that. I said on social media yesterday, cause someone was questioning, well, you know, has Mickey, you know, you've been around for a while, you're a veteran. And I said, don't you worry about Mickey James. She's still got it. I never lost it. You never lost it, girl. Never lost it, baby. <laughs> Honestly, I don't, I don't think because her technical game is so, so strong. I mean, I think Beth and jazz or like a combination of Beth and jazz is really where I would probably put if I had to like mentally and physically prep for. Yeah. That's a good question though. I, you know, you're right. There's not that many technical female wrestlers. Out there's there. not, there's not. Deanna, she yeah. smiles. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> that's a clarity, I know. Yeah. I, 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 it's a hard question, but the first person um, that popped into my mind was Chelsea. Um, because I feel like she is someone I've been fortunate enough to train with and, and be in the ring with and tag with and, and, um, she can do a little bit of everything. And I feel like Mickey, you fall in that category of, of you can do the high fly. You can do, I mean, everyone can do a little bit of technical wrestling. Um, mm-hmm. so I feel like, yeah, it's, it's a different ball game when you're, you're good at a lot of things. Um, so yeah, I guess my answer would be Chelsea. Wow. In her prime? You listen, uh, Kong is unmatchable. Unmatchable. I will always give her that. You know, there will never be another Kong. Um, but it's always possible. You just never know with an underdog. And when it is a different game or you have another way to get in there, like Mickey was just saying, the technical game, Kong may not have had as much experience with that in the ring with an opponent. Um, so you never know, you could throw someone off and, um, Hey, she's beatable. So you never say never. That's my answer. (laughs) 
Well, I think that, um, you know, Mickey has already professed how great of a technical woman's wrestler I truly am. Um, so if I get to pick the stipulation, it's going to be a submission match. I break arms. Um, and that is the strategy I go into every match wanting to use. Uh, so I would pick a submission match so I can snap her arms clean off her body. I bet you would. I bet you would. Um, I would have to say, you know, based off of what happened, we, you know, at my house, I mean, we could either go old school, like country style and do the old four corners or the bull rope match, or we could just do something that I've been and had a lot of success fit, uh, with before. And we could do a cage match, Dion. I mean, like uh, you, you profess how, how great of an opponent I am. I'm not going to go down easy. It's not going to be 30 seconds. And, and you're well, I've had more than one. So maybe Google them. You know, one of them was the main event of the show against uh, a legend, Vic, uh, Tara. Yeah, your king couldn't be out there with you. It's so, you know, make sure we don't have anybody interfering to help you out or anything like that. So I personally would have chose last knockout standing match because that really <gasps> ultimately um, kind of, you know, got to keep him down for that 10 count. And I like that too. I, I like it. I like it. I like that. Last knockout That's clear a couple weeks ago that this isn't a dream match for me. Um, I, you know, I said that on Impact that there's a whole line of women that I'd prefer to wrestle that would be a dream match for me ahead of Mickey. Um, so no, it, the answer is no. Uh, but the match is important because this is, this is, it's personal now. Um, and I think Last week, I showed that I'm willing to go any lengths to show how dominant of a champion I am and that I can get in your head and play my mind games and uh, show up where you least expect it. So, um, yeah, it, it's not a dream match for me, but apparently it is for some people. I know it is for Mickey. Uh, it's amazing. And, you know, to be able to come back at Slammiversary and for the, you know, the reaction and the response from the fans to be, to be there and to be a part of that and to even, um, ask Deanna to be a part of Empower and to head that up. Like, it, you know, it's been really, really cool. And then to be able to, you know, go on forward now and to have a chance at the Knockouts Championship, um, uh, at Bound for Glory, which is a pay-per-view that I've been able to make history at before, uh, but now, you know, with so much time and space in between and how much the women's wrestling has evolved and, and the spotlight is really getting shown now, it's it's really, really cool. And it's a full circle moment for me. And I'm very, very excited. Very excited. Yeah, I think... Um... I'm probably the most proud person of myself um, because before I signed with Impact, I, I was in a place I didn't even know that I wanted to be a wrestler anymore. So to be able to um, come into a company and, and prove my worth, not only to the wrestling world, but again, to myself um, is, is super uh, special to me. Um, the last 18 months with Impact have been mind blowing um with the reception i've got with the incredible things they've allowed me to do um and then you know the consistency i've had wrestling at the top of my game and really you know putting myself at the forefront of being one of the best in the world um that's all i've ever wanted and impact gave me the opportunity to do it so um yeah i i am over the moon about how this entire journey has has be, you know um started and then you know uh, continues to grow I never know what to say to this. It's just that would I had a really great end to, you know, in terms of a personal, I think every wrestler, Deanna, Mickey, everyone, if you have your final match and you're very satisfied with that match, mm -hmm. it's really hard to open that door again because there's not many people who get to finish their careers the way where they feel at peace. That's mm -hmm. my main uh, reason. Yeah, I, I just, I don't, I don't see the point of it because I really, I think there's great girls I can have matches with, but yeah. what's the point? I've had my time, right? So 
there's so many talented women out there. They, this is their time. This is their time to shine. This is their time to make magical moments. I've done that. I feel very satisfied. So, but I thank you. I'm very flattered. No. <laughs> um, my very first match was in a, a VFW um, uh, for the company who, so they had the training school and then they'd run shows the first Friday of every month. And uh, it was against um, a woman who had been wrestling in the Northeast, you know, maybe for, you know, 10 or 12 years at that point. Um, she was, you know, established wrestling for all of the big women companies um, up that way. And uh, for whatever reason, she wanted to break me in. And uh, I was fortunate enough that we got to, to practice beforehand and get to, you know, like roll around with each other and stuff before our actual match. And um, she dislocated my jaw. Uh, so heading into the match that weekend, um, I was terrified. Uh, and, you know, I was 18 years old. I, I didn't know, you know, who I was or what wrestling I would be doing or what to expect, how fans would react. I didn't have real gear. Um, so I think I was a little timid and I was terrified and I cried. Um, and so that definitely didn't, that definitely set the stage for, you know, the first year of my wrestling. But um, I look back and I laugh at that little girl who was so in over her head uh, and so scared uh, to make an impression and to, to use her voice um, because that's not who I am now. But uh, I learned and I learned that uh, how I want to treat people that are new coming into wrestling and how we can make um, people feel more welcome and want to be a part of this. So uh, it was definitely a learning experience. Um, I will say the two, two women who I really thought, uh, who are, who were unsigned or untapped talent that were at empower that I really, really thought was, um, Tootie Lynn, obviously I think little Tootie Lynn's, oh, she's a, what a, she's so cute and so young and hungry and just so sweet and, um, humble, you know, Deanna, do you know that word? I do. Um, are you aware of that word? Uh, and then another person um, that I thought did remarkable job is Masha Slamovich. And I think she's a star. She is, she's got a lot of sauce and, you know, she's quite, you know, poisonous, if you will. I mean, okay. So when I came back to the Indies, the first person I really, really wanted to wrestle was Roxy. And she just recently won um, the Ring of Honor Women's Championship. Um, yeah. So it's really exciting to see her kind of come into her own. And I feel like there's a ton of similarities between us. So um, I just have a special place in my heart for her. Um, and then uh, someone who actually comes from my training school was the first person who came to mind, Megan Bain. Um, she trains with Damian Adams. Um, I wrestled her quite a bit up in the Northeast. Um, she's yeah. doing a ton of, of stuff with Beyond and WWR. So I'm really excited to see uh, where the next year or two takes her. It's so <laughs> weird to hear you say somebody else to talk about somebody else besides yourself. You know, well, it's just really you know weird for me. He asked about new people. He asked about people who aren't as experienced and sophisticated and, and you know, um, champion-esque like me. I'm the champ, champ. So I couldn't say myself. I had to give credit where it was due, which I feel like I've done quite a bit in this whole interview. So uh, I don't know where the hostility is coming from. I'm just saying it's just awkward. I, did, I didn't even know how to take it in. I was just, I'm still absorbing it all because I'm just used to you talking about yourself, you know? Yeah, um, sure. I feel like uh, as wrestlers, we're used to being on the road and being in different venues and seeing different faces. Um, so I don't know that it'll be much of a shock. Uh, we've had fans for the last couple set of tapings at Skyways, um, and that was exciting because we hadn't got to do that. And I think especially for Slammiversary, it was more um, the pressure was really on. But I think we've settled in, and I think we're, we're getting back to our um, old normal with this new normal. And um, I'm excited to see a whole new, a whole new 
arena filled with new faces um, that possibly weren't able to come to Nashville uh, and to bring impact wrestling back all over the country and eventually the world. Uh, you know, it's a it's a bit of a bitter it's bittersweet for me because I go one. We love like I'm excited to get back, like Deanna said, in front of people. And I feel like that's where I perform my best is live in front of the audience. Um, I just love the energy that's there, you know, with, with the people and, and the story, it just, it's just so much to it. I mean, it's a little sad because obviously Nashville is the heart of impact in the sense, and it's my backyard. So I literally can drive to the, to, to work, but I am, I'm excited to go to Vegas and Samstown. I think it's going to be exciting for the fans because they have seen it um, in the impact zone now here in Nashville for so long that it's going to be cool to just get a whole uh, new scene and a new vibe and what better place than Bound for Glory. So it's exciting. Biggest pay-per-view of the year. Um, and we love Nashville. We love Skyway Studios, but you know, sometimes when we have a bigger event going on, it is nice to see those fresh faces and just have that different energy going on for that one event. And um, we, we love Las Vegas. We love Samstown and the fans there. Um, like you said, it's very far from Nashville. So the people who have not been able to see us since the fans have been back, this is their opportunity. You know, people in the California region can drive. I mean, it's it's just a whole new market out there for us. Yes, is the short answer, I think. And so you're saying if, uh as an all women's promotion altogether do you think it would have mainstream success in just yeah, north yeah. america or globally because i think that the answer is yes to all of that um i think it's uh you know it, it's taken a long time to get here you know from the knockouts knockdowns to uh, evolution to empower to now bringing back the knockouts knockdown and i think the women's divisions in each company have grown so much and now it's just providing you know different things and now there's so much more than just the women's championship or the knockouts championship to fight for now there's the tag team championships and more of those things to have and being that there's like such a vast amount of women very talented women out there that was always the thing is like is there enough women's talent out there and the answer is yes there is enough women's talent out there and how do you get people emotionally invested in these women to tune in every week that is the next that is the next key component of that so but yes yeah, mean? no, I, I agree with actually everything Mickey said. Um, and after Empower, uh, I did a ton of media where I said exactly that. I think that um, the amount of women that can be on a television show weekly and perform their best um, is so amazing um, because there's so many of them right now. And, you know, the, the women that are following after them who are just training, like the trend is only going to continue um, where women's wrestlers are coming in and are able to compete at that high level that TV requires. So uh, yeah, 100%, I think that it would be successful. And I think that um, it would inspire an entire new generation of women to get into this for all of the right reasons. Yeah, definitely. I think um, what, Mickey was just saying, there's so many women out there, and especially with this forbidden door open, it leaves so many possibilities. And she proved it wrong. You know, people were saying at that time, no, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Hey, it worked. At least give us a chance. Uh, give us the opportunity before you're going to mm -hmm. shut us down. And like I said, it's been always a constant fight, but I think uh, the market's out there for them. I think the talent's out there for them. And hey, it's not saying that all women are going to run the show. There are men who can support the women to run the show that are just as talented and know, know how to put a show together. You know, and there's always right. men behind the scenes as well to support us. And that's really, I found in the last year, finding the men that will support the women because it is a very male dominated industry, but we mm -hmm. found it and it's changing and it's getting better. And I just mm -hmm. hope for more. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. That's a good question. Um, I don't know that one really outweighs the other uh, because just because I was the most decorated just means that I lost them more, unfortunately. Um, 
But it, what it does say is that I've had, I've also, you know, had a, you know, different people to perhaps defend it against. Um, I think that Diana has definitely dominated since she's walked into the doors and she's definitely, you know, made a name for herself and she's certainly, you know, made a statement at my expense. Um, I think that there's a lot more than just the championship when I think about what's what's at stake here and what's on the line, it's like, yes, of course, it's about the championship at the end of the day, but this has gotten really personal. And so, you know, that's the edge. That's the real edge. You know, if I had to, to weigh out, uh, you know, dominance or experience, um, I think there's a middle ground between the two. Uh, but I think for me, um, my edge is that I've been doing this consistently for the last 18 months at Impact Wrestling. I've been at the top of our knockouts division. I've been uh, the champion for the majority of that time. So um, for me, it's more watching, you know, at NWA 73, I watched Mickey go out for her match for the first match in nearly a year. And I saw her question herself. I saw her wonder, can I do this? Am I going to be great at this? It's been a year. What's it going to be like out there? I don't have those questions about myself. I don't have the if or what happens after. I just know how to be a dominant champion. And I've done that and I've proved that. So for me, it's going out there and saying, I've done this and I can do it. And I'm going to continue to do it forever. But for Mickey, it's it's the question she's going to ask herself before she walks through the curtain. Um, so, you know, she has done it and she she knows she has done it. Uh, the world knows she's done it. But can she do it again? And I don't have those questions. What I hear is a little bit of cockiness. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know. Sometimes you might come in a little bit overconfident. But I do believe that Deanna has the skills. I, I truly believe what it comes down to is that day when it comes to the level of talent that we see here today with Deanna and Mickey, the talent is unbelievable. So I truly am a believer that it's whoever comes in that day, the most prepared, the, the who has put in the most work. Cause I have found from just former experience that that's normally who comes out on top, you know, who preps the most and who wants it the most that day. Mm -hmm. I want to thank everyone that came to the press podcast today. Uh, overwhelming demand, and we love having you all. Thank you so much for your patience. Uh, I will confirm that next week we will be back with my fellow colleague, D'Lo Brown, and he will be hosting and uh, presenting with the Good Brothers, Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows. So we appreciate Deanna. Thank you. Mickey, thank you for your time and answering all the questions from the media. We appreciate you all and we'll see you next week. Ah, yay.